Now in this part then we're asked to determine the nature of the turning point at 4.5. Remember we got that in an earlier part of the question, the first part. And to determine the nature of a turning point we need to know if it's essentially a minimum like that or a maximum. We can do this very easily by using d2y by dx squared, which we found out in the previous part of the question. Because all we need to do is substitute when x equals 4 into d2y by dx squared. And if it comes out as negative, it tells us it's a maximum. And if it comes out as positive, it tells us it's a minimum. OK, so... Let's see what we make of this then. When x equals 4, just simply substitute this into d2y by dx squared. And we have minus 3 then over x to the power 3 over 2. 4 to the power 3 over 2 then. Okay. For the next term, we have minus 3 over 4 times 4 to the power half. Now you could have do this on a calculator if you wish, but really it is very straightforward. We've got minus 3 over 4 to the power 3 over 2. In other words, the square root of 4, which is 2, and then cube it. 2 cubed is 8. As for the next term, we've got minus 3 over... Now, 4 to the half is the square root of 4. 4 times 2 is 8. So we have minus 3 eighths minus another 3 eighths minus 6 eighths or minus 3 quarters and this is essentially negative so that means that therefore we have a maximum a maximum turning point then at 4 5 and just for the record, okay, not that you're asked to do this, but if you were to sketch this graph, what you would have is this curve here. And you can see that you've got a turning point. I don't know if you can read this, but 1, 2, 3, 4, this point here, 4 units across, 6 units up. This is the point 4, 6, our turning point, and you can see it is a maximum. Okay, well that brings us now to the end of this question.